Hey guys, Dan Rice, FHCOutdoors.com. Today's video, we're gonna be doing a little bit of maintenance on my show outboard. We are gonna be changing the oil. It's a VF200 Yamaha show. And uh, you know, I'm addressing a couple of things with this video really. Um, these four stroke motors were designed to warm up at, to operating temperature, uh, which is usually like running it in the 3000 to 4000 RPM range. And then once it gets warm, uh, they're basically designed to run and run and run. Um, a lot of people are having issue with four stroke motors these days because technological advances such as structure scan and side imaging and all this kind of stuff, people are spending a lot of time on the outboard idling around the lake or the, or, or the river. Um, they're not necessarily designed to do that. They need to get to operating temperature because if they don't, what will happen is if the rings aren't set, fuel bypasses those rings and it will get into the oil. So when you go to check your oil, it looks high, or what they call making oil. They're not necessarily making oil. Actually, what's happening is you're passing gas. Um, that's, a, that's another debate for a different time. But um, essentially what I'm going to do is the new power head on the motor uh, was installed. It had his 20 hour service done by the dealership for warranty reasons. Um, and what I've noticed since then is that my oil is a, my oil is a little bit high. So I want to get that oil out of there. I want to replace it. I'm going to keep very, very close eye on my oil level. Um, after I do this, I'm going to take it out to Lake Coeur d'Alene and I'm just going to run the snot out of it. Uh, probably going to fill it up and I'm just going to run around the lake as, as hard as I can uh, just to make sure that those rings set. When it comes to changing your oil, regardless if you're having a making oil issue or not, you really only need a few things. I've changed oil since I was like 12 years old. I think it was the first thing that my dad ever taught me besides taking out the garbage. Um, you're gonna need uh, an electric pump if you choose to go this route. If you uh, stick this tube down the oil dipstick, um, the, the checker, you can actually suck the oil out of the crankcase and not have to take off the side apron on the motor, use the drain screw, and it kind of gets messy that way. So I elected to buy an electric pump and go that route. It's a lot cleaner, um, no mess. This was particularly kind of expensive. It was like $140 from West Marine, but I like the fact that it has uh, a container that I can kind of keep uh, safe away from the kids, um, out of the environment, you know, off the, off the grass and out of our, our, our water systems. Um, of course, you're going to need your oil. I have Yamalube 4M. This is 10W30 conventional. I'm going to get the ring set with conventional oil, and then I'll switch over to synthetic around 40 or 50 hours. Of course, you need your oil filter. Make sure it's the correct one. Um, the Yamaha show takes 7.1 quarts of oil, and so double check your service manual. Um, and if you really, really, you know, really need to, you can always uh, take this uh, to the dealership and have them do the service. So. Uh, if you're like me and you want to do it yourself, let's turn the camera around. I'm going to show you guys how to change oil in a Yamaha show outboard. And uh, it's very, very simple. Okay, so first things first, uh, the manual recommends that you start the motor with the flusher, uh, you know, for a few minutes, get the oil warmed up. It's a lot easier to take out. Um, and leave the motor um, after that in a basically a 45 degree angle. Uh, what, what's happening here is that you're draining the oil out of the heads making sure that all the motor's coming out of the top and then it's draining down into the crankcase. Uh, so what we're gonna do now is lower this and level it. You can take a level and actually place it on the cavitation plate uh, when it gets down and just to make sure that the, the outboard is level. And we're gonna leave it there for five minutes. All right, so the next step is we're gonna take out the oil dipstick. And you can see that the oil level should be between this hole and this hole here, but we're about a quarter of an inch high. And so we're gonna be taking that out and obviously putting some fresh clean oil back in here. So next what I'm gonna do is take my electric pump and my 12 volt adapters or my clips, put the red on the positive, the black on the negative, and so that it's all hooked up there. And then the next step is putting this tube down the dipstick and sucking out all the oil.
All right, so now that the crankcase is void of all the, the old oil, go ahead and turn off the pump. Remove the tube from the crankcase. Going to go ahead and replace the dipstick back into the crankcase just to see if there's any oil left. Do it a couple of times. And we're good to go. All the oil's out of the crankcase. All right, so one of the things you guys are gonna need, especially for this oil change or future oil changes, uh, is an oil filter cap wrench. It's really, really hard to get an adjustable oil filter wrench in here since it's such a tight space and there's lots of expensive little parts and sensors here, so you don't wanna slip and hit anything. Uh, the cap wrench that you're gonna need uh, looks like this. It's 73 millimeters and there's 14 flutes. So you can call your local you know, uh, auto parts company. I found this at Advance Auto Parts. They were the only one in Spokane that had 73 millimeter cap with 14 flutes. Um, it's pretty standard, I think, even with Toyota. So you should be able to find these are like five bucks. Uh, they're gonna save, save a lot of heartache. Um, to use it, it's basically a half inch drive. So you put your socket wrench on here and then you're able to loosen and tighten that oil filter really, really easily. So let's go ahead and put this guy on. It fits on there. recommended to have a bag ready um, so that you can just transfer it right to the bag and not make a, a total mess of this. If you change oil on your, your trucks or your cars, you know that this is the, the messiest part of the whole process is getting the oil filter off. Not too bad. So the next step is just to make sure that your oil filter seal did not stick here to this surface. You want to make sure that this is nice and clean. Um, go ahead and clean it and wipe it up. Make sure all the oil's off of there and that it's a fresh surface to work with. In all my years of changing oil, on cars and trucks and boats. Um, I've never had a seal actually stay and, and stick to, you know, stick to the, the mounting surface here. Um, regardless, it's probably the one time that you don't check that it would happen. So just make sure that it's nice and clean, clear of uh, any seals, any oil. And now we can uh, make sure that we have the correct oil filter to replace it with. Um, put a bead of oil around the seal, screw it back on, tighten it up as, as the specs uh, recommend and we're pretty much ready to go and, and fill the oil. The correct oil filter for this, uh, make sure you're using Yamaha Genuine Parts and Accessories. It's N26-13440-02. Uh, you want to make sure that that's the same part that you took off as, as you're putting back on just to make sure that it's the identical oil filter, which it is. So we're going to open this up. Get a little bit of oil uh, from our new oil that we're gonna be putting into the motor and just rub it around the seal, a little bit of a bead. And this is gonna help the seat. And right here on the oil filter, it says after it makes contact to the mounting base, you're going to turn it for another three quarters turn. So, okay. So it has made contact right there. 
and there's a little bit of a writing here on top of the filter and so if I need to make it three quarters of a turn this of course coming back all the way around would be one full turn um, basically going to split it into three quarters and so I need the writing to be up here at the top. I'm going to tighten this go ahead and grab my cap wrench. Now that I have oil on my fingers, I can't really tighten down the cap. Put that guy on. And we're just gonna check it. We're halfway there. A little bit farther to go. All right, so now that this is tightened to three quarters of a turn, uh, put my oil dipstick back in. We're gonna switch sides on the motor because that's where you fill the oil and we're gonna go ahead and do the next step. All right, so the next step is to come up here. Uh, it does have your engine oil replacement quantities here. So if you had not changed the oil filter, it would be 6.8 US quarts. Uh, since we did the filter, it's gonna be 7.1 US quarts. Um, of course, this is one US gallon, making this just a little bit over four quarts. And so 7.1, we're gonna need to use a whole one of these and um, most of the other ones. So we're gonna get to pouring this guy in, take off the cap. And get to work. All right, so after you get the oil back into your motor, the next step is to double check that the level in the crankcase is correct. And so what you're gonna wanna do is let the oil, you know, let the motor sit here for a good five, 10 minutes, let all that oil get down into the crankcase and then come and pull your dipstick. You're gonna go ahead and wipe it off. The first time you do this, there's gonna be no oil on it. It's almost like the, there's like a vapor lock or something on here. So pull it out, wipe it off, and then stick it back in all the way down, pull it back out, and you're now gonna see the oil level in between these two dots. It's gonna be really kinda hard to get this to focus, um, but there's a dot here on the dipstick, and there's a dot here. So you're gonna want your oil in between those two dots. Um, at this point, I'm dead in the middle, and I think I'm gonna stop there, uh, just because um, you know, according to the motor, that's all the oil it needs. And so that's really all there is to changing the oil in a VMAX show outboard. Um, you know, it's, it's been a tremendous motor. It is on a, you know, a new power head, but I absolutely love the performance. I love the whole shot. I love how quiet it is. Um, and that there's not a bunch of, you know, blowing smoke and everything like that on tournament morning. So, um, Let's just finish up some of these details and then uh, it's, it's time to rock and roll. Last but not least, after putting on your oil cap, I'm gonna kinda just go through the motor and just make sure everything's tight again. I'm gonna go back to the oil cap, make sure it's tight. Come back around, make sure that I put my oil dipstick back in and make sure that that oil filter is nice and tight and that I didn't leave any tools on the motor, anything that could mess anything up, just give it a good Overlook, now's a really, really great time uh, if you have Yamaha marine grease to go through and, and look at the service manual and, and look at some of the places that you need to make sure that are uh, maintained with grease and put the cover back on as it's time to go. So hopefully this was easy enough for you guys and hopefully the camera angles and everything made it uh, a little bit easier to look at and to learn. It really is a simple process. It's draining the oil, removing the oil filter, replacing both oil, oil filter, making sure that you're at the right level, and that is gonna make sure that your outboard's in tip-top shape uh, when it comes tournament time. So 
Um, if you have any questions, post down below. I will have products to all these, or, or links to all these products in the YouTube description. Um, it'll be from various different places because, you know, like I said, I had to buy something at West Marine. I bought the oil down at Spokane Valley Marine. And so there's just different places that I got everything, but it's not necessarily that you have to go to these places. It's just more of a, um, you know, a guide for you guys. So, uh, you know, thanks for watching and we'll see you on the water. Good luck in 2017. Hope you catch the big ones.